What's going on everybody? It's me, Zipped Back. Um, this is part three of my SFML beginner tutorial series. Um, if you haven't watched the previous videos, I'd recommend and go watch those. This is gonna be a slight continuation of those, um, off on a tangent about text, basically drawing text in SFML and kind of how that works. So I'm gonna start off here with um, the code from the last video. If you wanna go link in the description, you can copy down the boilerplate code. So what we're gonna be doing to this code from the last video is basically deleting all the stuff that is kind of specific to our project then and just leaving the SFML sort of window and loop and stuff like that. So we're gonna start here. I'm gonna get rid of the, the rectangle stuff, right, for our bouncing rectangle, the velocities and the, the actual shape itself, delete that. Um, all this, you know, physics stuff here, I'm going to delete all this. And then also the um, window.draw call here, I'm going to delete that. So now we should kind of be back to our boilerplate code. Um, this is going to be linked, just this code here will be in the description uh, if you want to follow along, as well as the final code uh, if you just want to copy and paste it. So how does SFML handle text? Well, let's have a look back here at our window. I'm just going to run the program. It compiles and opens up. See, this is our window. So we want to draw some text on here we're gonna to need to do two things to actually draw that text. The first thing is that we're gonna to need to actually declare a font for SFML to use. And this is an object, so SF font. Uh, I'm gonna just call it Open Sans because I'll be importing an Open Sans font. We're then gonna to have to actually set the font because right now we've just created an object that has no idea you know, what font it should use, what font file. So we're then gonna do Open Sans dot load from file. And here we're gonna provide a string. And this string is gonna be the exact file path to our font file. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my desktop here real quickly. And on my desktop, I have a folder called SFML fonts. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the path here. I'm just gonna paste that in there. And you can see we've got some, some errors here. It's because of these backslashes, um, we're gonna to need to make them double backslashes. If you know why this is, um, great. If you don't, don't worry about it. It's just called uh, escape characters if you're curious to search about more about it. So now we've got our path in there to the folder with our fonts. We're then going to need to, you know, grab our font. I'm going to grab the Open Sans Lite. So I'm going uh, to copy the name of that. And then I paste the name in there. And then I'm going to throw .ttf. And you can download uh, tons of fonts online for free. And they'll just come in .ttf files that you can then just provide the path to. So now what we've done is we've loaded our path um, into the file, I guess the font file, into this object. Uh, and if you're wondering, there is no default fonts included in SFML 2.0, so you're going to have to import a file always. So now we've got that. Now we can go and create a text object. So we can go SF text my text, I'm just gonna call it that. Um, now this text isn't gonna be able to do anything, even if we kind of, if we set some string in the text, it's not gonna do anything because we need to provide it with an actual font. And we're gonna go my text font. And you see how it takes a reference to a font. What this means is that you can't um, get the font out of scope. Basically you can't have a function that just gets the font as a reference and then you know deletes it you can't have that you need to keep the font object in the scope of every you know object that you use it because when you pass it into the text to actually set the font of the text object um, it's passed by reference and not by value so you're going to have to um, you're gonna have to keep it in scope anyways little thing there now you set the font we can now go ahead and my text dot set there's a few things we can set. There's actually tons of things we can set. They're all right here. And I'll leave a link actually in the description to the official SFML kind of docs that explain uh, each of these in, in detail. Um, the basic ones that are most useful, set string, hello world. We can set it to the actual text. Um, and actually, in fact, I'm gonna add this now to the, the list of things we render and then you'll see we can actually run this program and, and it'll be visible. So I'm just gonna go um, between clear and display. I'm gonna go my text, uh, no, sorry, uh, window.draw. Should I pass in our object there? We run this. And you can see, hello world, there's text up there. Um, the most relevant kind of functions are gonna be, here, I'm just duplicating this line. Most relevant functions are gonna be set position. 
and uh, oops, that's not a string. That's going to be some position, we'll say 300, 400, kind of around the middle of the screen. And also, we can set, it might be tempting to say set color. That's deprecated. You can't use that function. You're going to have to use set fill color. There we go. And we're going to pass in an SF color. We could either create one from RGB values or we could just use one of the kind of built in presets. Um, I'm going to use, let's say, green. There you go. Now there is there's more things you can use. You can set uh, character size. Uh, of course, that's a useful one. You can set the um, outline color and things like that. But we're not going to go over that. I'll leave that up to you guys to read the wiki uh, or docs rather to figure that out. But now you should be kind of on your way to using this. You can see, yeah, green text. Hello world has been moved now. So that is how you use text in SFML. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day. See ya.